Hello, welcome back to the L1 show Links with Friends. Today's April 21st and we're doing nonsense stories, but also AI and space. And robots. And robots. Robots. AI is a subsection of robots. This is like the fun day, usually. There's a few sad stories in here, but most well, of them are fun. The AI stuff's getting a little alarming. A little. It's going to be teaching your children. Saul Khan explains why GPT-4 is ready to be a tutor. And the answer is because he wants to sell you a product. That is Sal Khan of Khan Academy. You might have heard of them. And he's saying that, yeah, he realizes that it's it lies and does terrible things and probably shouldn't be exposed to children. But they've fixed all of that. <laughs> they will fix those as they encounter them, which he's probably not wrong about. I mean, if it worked correctly all the time for common tutoring scenarios and actually I, I don't disagree it's probably pretty awesome but they got to fix it really quick and, and also keep an eye on it maybe yeah he said that they've been working really hard to make sure that it's mostly accurate and that it knows how to like catch what kids are running into as an issue but i'm like i just we have a tendency trust it. to where if it's like if it, we get it working for the one thing it doesn't work for we're like all right it's good and then we just don't look at it again and so in a year from now it's like hey, wait it tells you that eggs come from where Oh, the eggs come from the store, not from chickens. <laughs> well, we've talked about the president memes and uh, the, the Harry Potter, all the various this as this and generative AI and everything. And uh, the crazy thing about all of that is that nobody owns it. Nobody's making money from it. I guess social media is. But the New Yorker is finally catching on to the fact that the world is being revolutionized in terms of memes and culture <laughs> their headline is ai pop culture already here they're talking about stuff we were talking about two weeks ago and ai uh, uh balenciaga harry potter but this week it's ai balenciaga star trek the next generation oh there's so many now and it's they're talking about how there is no barrier now for you having a thought and that being a reality there's a little bit of a barrier they did do a lot of work individually it's like you got to generate the images then you got to do the audio and blah 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 you still have to have access to it because it's the same thing as like with photoshop making memes you still need to have a little bit of knowledge but you can get some free accounts to do most of that stuff mm. every time i mention the lord of the rings danny devito thing i get another clip and it gets a little closer to the reality that i'm imagining Ugh. the worst reality <laughs> Just how Tolkien imagined it. <laughs> it's we're, No, I mean, it's finally, like, I really want to buy Zombo.com for cheap and put this stuff there because it's like anything you can imagine you can do with the power of AI. And, <laughs> Zombo Zombo Com. Com. I think ZomboCom's still running, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been updated, so it's not Flash anymore. <laughs> anything you can do with Zombo so Com. Com. Well, OpenAI is aware of all of this, and they're aware of how disruptive it's going to be to the world, and they're working on excuses as to why... It's okay. Open AI to offer remedies to resolve Italy's chat GPT ban. This is probably funny. The article implies that they asked chat GPT how to resolve the ban itself, and they're just going to run with the recommendation, which is the right level of inception. Now, Italy got upset when chat GPT started revealing the user's details to one another. Chat GPT admits that was a bug. They say they fixed it. but <laughs> That'll how, never happen again. How could they know? <laughs> How It'll you, never happen again. Just don't question How it. could you do enough testing to know what this black box is going to spit out at any given time? We're the test. So Italy, bizarrely enough, seems to be accepting that. Like, they haven't said anything official yet, but they're kind of like, okay, all right. We don't want to be left out of this. Let's do it. And... More and more people are jumping on that bandwagon, like we talked about with the blockchain thing. Every company in the world... Putting AI in their description right now. And not only that, but they want to have some kind of AI thing. They want to be a part of it. They might not even know how, but they're trying to spin it up, and everybody's trying to do it all at once. AI developers stymied by server shortages at AWS, Microsoft, and Google. Yeah, turns out everybody needs the hardware. So there's, a, there's an explosive growth there. Shouldn't have been, you know, if you're if you're a billionaire, you're looking at this and it's like, man, I put all my money in Lime scooters. I should have put it in GPUs. Well, in fact, Mr. Elon Musk did just buy a ton of GPUs. Mm. So he's planning something, even though he wrote that letter. That's weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Weird how he always does the opposite of what he says he's going to do. So strange. And Google, once again, they are not the leader. And it's eating them up and they're trying to find a bandwagon to hitch their 
huge pools of money to. Anthropic's five billion dollar four year plan to take on OpenAI. There, there is no plan. They're just looking for seed capital. Yeah, they got it. They did. Yeah, they're like, oh, it's gonna take a while, but we'll catch up to him eventually. <laughs> Also, Please give us money. Also, don't forget about Bard. Bard's not terrible, we promise. <laughs> Please? Hello? Hello? Maybe they should ask ChatGPT how to make Bard cooler. <laughs> Get a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> okay. And uh, we got some self-driving vehicles. Uh, it seems like China wanted to be first, but they got beat out by Germany. China's DD Global to roll out self-developed robo-taxis by 2025. Meanwhile, they're already on the road in Germany. It's a weird looking Yeah, place. look how small they are. They look there's, small. There's Maybe no they're scale not. scale there. Yeah. They, but see they if they look, got another one. Is there one with a human? Oh, no. They don't have any real cars. That was concept art. It was concept art. Oh, no. But a lot of times concept art will have a human figure in it. So like you can kind of get an idea of how big it is. So unfortunately for DD, they will not be the first driverless bus to start service oh, in scotland oh it's a germany i'm sorry scott the world first i thought not i thought there was the driverless like the individual taxis this is just a bus on a loop right this is the one where it's not really only very specific roads yeah. so it's like it knows the map perfectly yeah. not quite the same it as... only plays dust <laughs> and uh in san francisco they have had the cruise automated cars but more and more, those are seeming to be like a plague on the other drivers. <laughs> and here, a very special kind of bus fooled it. Cruise recalls software on self-driving taxis after a municipal bus crash. Oh, man, what if you brought, bought an adversarial advertisement on a bus to hide it from the AI maliciously? Could you be responsible? Oh. So apparently these have very hard-coded like identifiers in them. Like, that's a bus because it looks like this and it behaves like this. These muni buses have rubber in the middle which allows them to be like snake-like oh. and so the crews saw the front of the snake go one way and it was like i know what happens here that's a bus it's going to do this but the rear of the bus didn't do that and so there was what they described as a low speed collision a panic moment i mean the first time you see one of those on the road it's just wow they really didn't want to hire a second bus driver to drive that other bus did they you know it's crazy though the uh, Scottish bus is going to have two people in it monitoring it. <laughs> so they've increased the number of humans. <laughs> We're creating jobs with AI. <laughs> and those are higher paid jobs than a driver too, I'm sure. And oh my God, the boiled frog. I don't remember exactly what we said about this, but I guarantee you we said this is what was going to happen. Because yeah. it's obvious that this is what was going to happen. You simply wait. You let the things die down. You do the exact same thing again. The New York Police Department is bringing back its robot dog. Digidog is out of the pound. It's like, we we already bought them. There's a whole room for them. They're in the way. We're not returning them. We're just putting them away for a month until you forget. We would have a whole other lockup and interrogation room if we get these dogs out of here. We got to get them into the field. Come on. They also have another kind of robot uh, that is more of a surveillance robot. So they asked the dude at the press conference and they're like, well, what? how is this different than the previous time? And he said a bunch of word salad that was meaningless. And ultimately was like, no, this is different because we're going to take them to Times Square and let everybody look at them. That doesn't sound different. <laughs> what if you go to pet it and they're like, get your hand away from the dog. <laughs> that sounds like we got a software update for face recognition. We're going to take it to Times Square and test it out. The dog pulls out a gun. <laughs> Free training data. Well, it'll have it mounted to the little arm. Yeah. <laughs> it just shoots you when you try to pet it. Plus the little arm, it's like, it's this orientation. I guess it can rotate or whatever, but I like to think if it shoots, it's going to shoot sideways. Yeah, like yeah. Gangster. <laughs> this really sucks. I was hoping I could buy these at auction for pennies on the dollar. Mm -hmm. Not now. No, I think that's still a hot product. And Walmart has a lot of hot products. Apparently, Chris is going back to Walmart. I don't know what's wrong with her. I It's the only place I can get the thing I need. Well, the thing you need was likely handled at some point in its life cycle by a robot. Walmart chases higher profits powered by warehouse robots and automated claws. Now, at first, the claw. at first uh, the CNBC article is not amazing, but I, I heard about this a few days ago at the, the press thing, the shareholder thing. And I thought this was just Walmart trying to stay relevant in terms of this is our plan for dealing with automation, blah, blah, blah. Apparently they've been working on this for years and they have a, a, a test version of this at a couple of different Walmarts. This is like all their stock and back room operations, and this could actually transform uh, transform all of their stuff. 
Well, it's not at the Walmart. It's at the distribution center. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one is in Florida, and they invited the press to come and look at everything, and it really is. There's just no people. It's forklifts, driverless forklifts, these claw machines, and other rolling robots that deal with everything. They also interviewed a guy at a Walmart. I think it was a manager. He was like, let me show you something. And he went to the back, to the you know the loading bays, and he opened up two trucks. One was packed by humans, and they pointed out like a box of Pop Tarts, which was sideways and crushed <laughs> under a box. And they opened up the other one, and it was perfect. Yeah. Everything uh. was like a perfect line. And he was like, "Yes, we will be staying with the robots." <laughs> That's gonna be great to have you know a flood of people who were working at the warehouses. Yeah. I don't. There's there's there is something that's changed in humanity because there are some people that just do not care. Well, I, you know, I think when you look at the world around you and it's so horrible and there's so much awfulness and control and just the misery of it all, I, I think I could easily slip. Are you talking about like the packer because he just throws the pop tarts? Yeah, in? they're just like I don't. Well, care. I mean, I kind of get it. Like you're probably not getting paid that well. You're probably never going to be able to buy a house or anything like that. And they're constantly working you at all hours to just ship Pop-Tarts. It's like but, the little robot where he's like, what's my purpose? And it's like, to, to ship Pop-Tarts. But what if what if the robot like had it, just an amazing lavish list? Like you, you, you ship Pop-Tarts, but look, you have a nice house and you don't have to worry about anything. And health Well, then, then people would probably care about their jobs <laughs> again. But. but it's also true that it's never been easier to change your situation in life right you can teach yeah. yourself almost anything but these people have never been taught that that's a way that you could live Sorry. right you know, it's like cradle to the grave corporate ownership mm. that's what they want but that's what they teach yeah and nobody knows how to break out of that perhaps we can break out of that cycle with the power of black holes Scientists unveil a new and improved skinny donut black hole image. I was really hoping you were going to go for the store.level1text.com right there as the segue. <laughs> we don't have any educational products there. No. It's not a huge improvement, but considering that black holes are invisible. Yeah, it's something. This is what we can infer is going on there. It's crazy. The bright spot is actually the stuff that it's eating, not the black hole itself. So we're looking at the negative portion of that image. And we all know that all black holes ultimately have one goal in mind, and that is Chris's death. Yep. And this one, we've actually talked about it before. It's on its way to find her. But it's doing an amazing thing while it's coming here. Hubble sees possible runaway black hole creating a trail of stars. So Look at that artwork. He's moving so fast <sighs> that he's taking the gas in front of him. I mean, I'm saying he, it might be a she. And pooping out all these star systems back here there's enough I, I my impression of it was that it's distorting space enough and attracting enough matter around it that it's jump starting the collapse of the things behind it whereas it was there was enough of an equilibrium there nothing was happening but when it passes through then all of a sudden everything gets a little closer together and it's actually enough to collapse in on itself and he's also not consuming the stuff because he's moving too fast which means he is starving for krista's blood oh and then he finally gets me and it's like, oh, that wasn't really that satisfying. She's yeah. very bony. I'm going to need about four trillion more of those. <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably that's not, even not enough. nearly enough density. <laughs> uh, maybe you can try to hide from the black holes on Jupiter. The JUICE mission will soon launch to Jupiter's icy ocean worlds. JUICE is an acronym, but they don't capitalize it. I don't understand why. Maybe they're actually just going to get drunk on Jupiter. That's the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer mission. So it's going to go and uh, it's going to take it eight years to get there, but it's going to go to Jupiter. It's going to hang out. It's going to take a look at it. There he is. <laughs> Jupiter's crying. Please help me take care of my moons. Oh, wait, maybe that's just art that children did. I thought that was the actual Looney thing. <laughs> Oh, okay. yeah. This looks like children made it. <laughs> What's happening at NASA? <laughs> be great. <sighs> so that's cool. Uh, Ganymede, Jupiter's largest moon, it will ultimately orbit that forever until it dies. We're just going to litter. Ganym Ganymede is what you're saying. Remember when we all thought Elon Musk was a great guy who was going to get us to Mars? 
uh, yeah, it was many years ago. <laughs> and uh, he might still do it, but I don't think anybody believes he's a great guy at this point. Uh, but when we get to Mars, there's a big question of how will humans react to such a stifling environment? Well, we're going to study it. Inside the 3D printed box in Texas where humans will prepare for Mars. I saw this and the whole time I thought, we should 3D print these for the housing crisis. Did they put dust in the environment? Yeah, they put dust in there. And so this section here is a simulated outdoor Mars environment. It's a giant bubble. Mm. And like they live in a little tomb, but they're all going to have to suit up and go on missions into the little oh. the bubble. They she's also, not wearing a helmet. She's going to get alien invaded. Like in She's a... preparing. She's not one of the volunteers. Oh. So uh, you're going to have to live in a tiny space with four other people or three other people for one year. You have to grow your own food and you have to go on the away missions. It's a lot of work. Times. They should do a celebrity version. <laughs> Just ship off all the... Who would you choose, comment section, to put in the celebrity Mars habitat for one year together? Mitch McConnell. Gilbert Gottfried already died. We just throw his corpse in there. <laughs> we How do you deal with style. this? We uh, recently heard that some Starlink satellites did not work. Turns out that might have been a little bit of hubris from the SpaceX crew. <laughs> NASA reveals what made an entire Starlink fleet satellite fleet go down. Well, it turns out that they couldn't reach orbit because of the pressure from solar wind because of a coronal mass ejection. A mini Carrington. They were pushed back down and burned up in the atmosphere. Poor little guys. It was a light show, though. Puerto Rico is where you could see this. That'd be scary if you were in Puerto Rico and you didn't know what it was. <laughs> That's just the government story where the Transformers were fighting the Decepticons. <laughs> <laughs> and solar storms will apparently be much more of a part of our lives coming up because we are preaching the, uh, preaching, approaching the solar maximum. This new AI-powered computer model can predict dangerous solar storms. We should all run our own local copies so that we can be aware, because they wouldn't tell us if the big one was coming anyway. Maybe that's why uh, the UK got that emergency alert system, so they can tell you, turn off all your electronics. <laughs> the mobile phones. Yeah. Uh, apparently, with the speed of those ejections, the most we can hope for is about 30 minutes of lead time. Yeah. yeah. Which ain't bad, considering that light is eight minutes from, uh, from Earth. So. How long do you think, though, it takes to get through all the layers of bureaucracy to actually turn everything off? Well, what you got to do is you got to build your Faraday storage mm. and then you drill your family. It's like, all right, you got 30 minutes. You got to get your most valuable electronic possessions and then we put them in the box. You time them. Mm. And if they're if it's 3001, that child is left out. <laughs> My box for that is so large. I wonder it, if that's what the guy thought was coming. Are you guys, or do you say Uranus or Uranus? Both are hilarious. <laughs> so I'm fine with either. When we talk about taking stunning images of Uranus, that's, you got to go with that, right? <laughs> yeah. See Uranus's rings and stunning new image from the Webb Telescope. Oh, beautiful. I would say that's a glorious hole. <laughs> Got a lot of mass. M dash <laughs> demonetized. <laughs> well, uh, this is a terrifying reality, and maybe this explains why some of those terrible warehouse workers aren't improving their lot in life. American IQ IQ scores have rapidly dropped, proving the reverse Flynn effect. <laughs> Are we really getting less intelligent? invariably in the comments now i'm more i really have no idea obviously but i'm thinking it's probably both but what is the ratio of education versus environmental factors like the poison and stuff that we're eating mm. it's probably why, why not both i mean it's probably definitely both but how much of each yeah there was one uh a, a couple of measurements that they've gone up one of them was three-dimensional spatial reasoning. I think 3D video games are probably what's going on there, right? Yeah. Oh, like it's much easier. In the old days, if you're growing up, if you were born in the 20s and somebody was like, just visualize a cube, they'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but now it's much easier because technology, I guess. 
do you think there's a coming generation where we'll have an easier time visualizing a hypercube and things like that because of our participation in virtual reality? But they won't know what the, the feel of grass is like. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, maybe we'll live longer. I don't know. I probably won't trust this. <laughs> Cancer and heart disease vaccines ready by the end of the decade. Uh, it's like, well, we've got an easier time reprogramming RNA. Let's do fun things with that. Now, one thing I do like about this is this is not a prophylactic vaccine. This is, they literally, after you have the tumor, they go in and biopsy it, send it off to the lab, and they're like, let's make a vaccine just Tailored to you. Yeah. It's designer. And by the time you have a cancerous tumor, you need to try whatever, right? It's it's oak couture cancer treatment. That's probably a net positive. Does that stand for, like, individual tailored? or? Uh, like, oak couture fashion is, like, when you have a, a designer actually work with you. No. Oh. And they tailor it to you and your taste. Nice. I'm sure my insurance company will pay for all of that. Well, with your Amazon basics. <laughs> <laughs> Healthcare. Well, here's a, a big reminder. Um, when you see this headline, you might be surprised by it. But remember what's not said in this headline, which is everybody else will be lied to, mm. which is why you should never speak to them. Indiana police will no longer be able to lie to children to gain confessions because that happened. And then there was some stuff that happened and then there was some outrage. And then the lawmaker said, you know, we should probably stop this because children don't know any better. If you're the Indiana police person who did this, are you like, am I the bad guy? No, because you wouldn't be <laughs> lying to children. If you had that level of self-awareness, you wouldn't be in that job. That's true. And those poor children, after they've been lied to, you might think that they get to go home to their loving families. Well, not all of them. Some of them will be working in horrible conditions. U.S. urges meat companies to ensure they don't use child labor. Now, the word urge. Yeah, yeah. they're not required by law. Yeah. You can totally hire kids to muck out really horrible, gruesome things. That's totally fine. Have the required reading, if you're hired at one of these, is Slaughterhouse-Five. I'll just say The Jungle by Upton Sinclair. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Deeply Wait, depressing. I don't think Slaughterhouse-Five actually has anything to do with slaughterhouses. No. That's a military... Mm. Uh, the company was, uh, I can't remember the name of the company, but yeah, they looked into it and they're like, Ooh, 3,800 children working at 835 companies, Packers sanitation services. There it is. They've paid a $1.5 million fine. That seems like just the cost of doing business. That's probably less than the wage you paid the kids. Uh, if I were working at a fortune 500 and a resume came across my desk and you know, it was a 20 something who just got out of college and they listed their first job as like, Oh, I mucked out the horrible thing from the thing. It's like, that is somebody that is motivated to get the job done. Or, or someone who's being pimped out by their parents because they can't afford rent. Or if you're Amazon, you're like, that is a person who will tolerate whatever I do to them. Yeah. <laughs> That's dark. Yeah. Also imagine, cause these kids are still in school and they're going to school and they're seeing like, the well-to-do kids and their fancy clothes and their iPhones and having a good time and talking about the stuff they did on the weekend. I was like, Oh, Hey little Billy, what did you do on the weekend? Uh, I cleaned up cow viscera as I do on every weekend. <laughs> then they go to the cafeteria and there's burgers yeah. and it's so, a Billy. Why aren't you eating your burger? Like, no, I'm good. No, no more. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's, there's a lot of introspection there too. It's like, Oh, I'm really stressed out from all the papers and stuff that I have to write. And it's like, I literally cleaned exploded cow. Uh, I, I think did, did I, you miss sort something? I don't know here? if there was two library stories. I might've consolidated, but the library is now a battleground, which what a strange thing to be against. It's okay. not, no one is really against the, there, there's a few people that are wild up about libraries, but libraries are like, but this is also the copyright. Well, but this. it's more about, people trying to control what goes into the library yeah. or what doesn't go into the library. And it's getting ridiculous. Missouri house gives initial approval to a $45.6 billion state budget that defunds its libraries. Heaven forbid you'd be anywhere in public where you're not spending money. Well, the last time we de defunded the libraries, it was historically extremely embarrassing because it was uh, extremely racially motivated. But I guarantee you could go through this budget and you probably wouldn't have to read more than 20, 30 seconds to find something less deserving of public money than libraries. <laughs> yeah. 
libraries a lot of the time serve important functions for communities too like they tend to be a safe haven like if you have some really insane fundy parents and you can you know make it to the library and escape then you're probably better off like society is better off from the, the, the librarians well, thinking, are like, like you know kids reading groups seed banks seed trading no there's an important social function there too you're you're just illustrating our dark reality of our <laughs> yeah. childhood yeah. and uh so you might think some some of those people would tell you that the true place you could go that's safe is the church and not the library but oh boy, that's not safe. <laughs> the, 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 this headline is Arizona Supreme Court finds that the Mormon church can conceal crimes against children because of clergy privilege. When, when did the clergy get law enforcement privilege? Is this is this some Constantine stuff going on here? What is what what is happening? So this fella, I don't know, they don't have a picture of him, but he had been doing the the, the most horrible thing that you can do to children. And uh He'd been confessing it at the church. Now, eventually it came out because he posted some videos to social media. And when they started looking into it, hey, did you ever tell anybody about this? Yeah, I did. And they went to the church. Now, they tried to prosecute these people, but they said, no, no, no. We have this immunity and the Supreme Court has sided with them. Wouldn't, but like at least with therapy, like it's all confidential unless you hurt someone else or you or commit a crime, or yeah, threaten a crime. or threaten yeah. to hurt yourself. And that's certainly hurting. Yeah, if you, and it's a crime. You, well, if you if that was if he was talking to his psychiatrist and his psychiatrist believed that there were people in danger, then right. That I'm saying it should be the same for both. And yeah. you had to assume that the danger was ongoing. Yeah. yeah, or that he would do it to somebody else. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we're supposed to do about that except be angry. And you should be angry about this because uh, jails, you know, you know, you see a lot of people who are authoritarians will be like, well, it's supposed to be bad. You don't, you shouldn't be there. You should, this should motivate you to stay out of not it. Not this prison architect. <laughs> I've seen some of your prisons. They're not that humane. I'm, no, mine are really humane. They I all have like the, bookshelves in their mm, cells. I remember them calling out for literacy almost constantly. That's why they had bookshelves in there. <laughs> Well, I don't know how many Some books. Some of them had artists' things in there. Like, oh, we did a you, lot you of stuff. They're going to stab each other with the paintbrushes. <laughs> well, it was for like the good prisoners, the well, low security. I don't know how good this guy was as a prisoner, but I don't think it matters. I don't think he deserved this. Family wants answers after man, quote unquote, Ugh. eaten alive by bedbugs in county jail. The attorney says. So this is somebody that did not belong in jail. Probably they belonged in a mental institution, which we don't have. What? Yeah, we don't have. Mm. Uh, they their health was deteriorating the jail people noticed that their health was deteriorating they didn't look into why they died and they were eaten by insects in fact they died and apparently weren't like for three months like how does I, that happen the other thing i i have a question about like even if you were the most callous horrible person imaginable and you don't care about the prisoners how do you not notice the bed bugs on yourself that's true yeah like they would be all over the prison it wouldn't just be confined to that one cell maybe they like change clothes while they're there and shower off at the end of the day or something. Are they still, they're so easy to like track places. I, I, I think it's true that bed bugs have a little bit of an anesthetic quality when they bite you. Right. So they can keep feeding on you and you don't necessarily notice if you're asleep. Yeah. yeah. But there's so many other unanswered questions like three months. It's like, okay, here's your tray of food. I'm coming back to get your tray of food. You haven't eaten any of your Did food. Did that person never have any kind of outside time either? Like, uh, I imagine that because they had mental issues, they were probably just impossible to deal with, right? So they didn't. They just let it go. God, that's dark. It seems like standard operating procedure would be, did they eat food for the, you know, I was like, okay, they didn't eat food today. All right, we'll check tomorrow. Did they not eat food for two days in a row? Mm, something is wrong. Checklist. Did they eat food? Yes or no? Uh, number two, were they food? <laughs> yes or no? Was there a horrible smell emanating from the cell? And when it comes to food, once again, our lawmakers in a, uh, the hypocrisy meter is just broken after this, right? <laughs> like the glass shatters and blood starts pouring out of the hypocrisy meter when it hits this level. <sighs> North Dakota senators vote to boost their own meal reimbursements after rejecting a free school lunch bill. This just, I can't say what this makes me want to do. <laughs> it's Definitely not, don't say that. Yeah, but it's nothing good. Now, they didn't necessarily reject the free school lunch bill. They change the threshold or refuse to raise the threshold for income where a kid gets the free meals. But 
they raised their daily allowance. I think it went from $35 a day to $45 a day per, yeah. Inflation's really kicking us in the butt, but not our constituents. But why are we ever feeding these people? Why can they Security, do I'm it sure. on their own? I mean, they, they're they more capable of packing their own lunch than kids. When, and, and the kids have to go to school or they get reported by a truancy offers, officers. I, I bet there's several high-functioning kids who are way better at meal prep than these. Yeah. <laughs> what? It's a banana. How much can it cost, Michael? Ten dollars? So they interviewed all these guys and they all have the same answer. It's like, well, one piece of legislation doesn't, this is not like the others. We consider them all individually, which is just nonsense. Uh, yeah. you, how do you not see not feeding kids looks bad? Oh, we did have another library story uh. and it's kind of the same thing, right? There's a fight over the ideologies inside the library and both sides are willing to go scorched earth to, to not lose. Texas County ways shutting down libraries to circumvent judges order overturning book ban. Yeah. I don't know if it's on the current book ban, but I was very surprised to learn that flowers for Algernon was on uh, the book ban list at some point or another. The sci-fi book. No. Well, the, sci-fi? the one about the mouse. The fantasy. This. Now, some of these books are stupid, but uh, I don't think they're dangerous, but I did want to showcase just these two bullet points, which are so good. It's these book titles. <laughs> Uh, my butt is so noisy and Larry, the farting leprechaun. Well, you ignored, I broke my butt and I need a new butt. Uh, the sequels. That's like a captain underpants kind of humor. I mean, who's also, offended by that? Freddie, the farting snowman. Nothing's going to ferment at those temperatures. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> How could a snowman fart? But that's why we're going to shut down the libraries. That's what we're fighting Freddy over. Because the farting snowman. There's a battleground. <laughs> And he's in the middle of it. Ugh. Oh, my goodness. This reality. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this was the Philly sheriff. Uh, the Philly sheriff is went to the city council and was like, listen, I need more monies. I can't hire enough deputies. And they said, what did you do with the money we gave you last year for deputies? Uh, I don't know what the title was. Philadelphia sheriff budget funding raise. Okay. Well, it's impossible to tell because the Philadelphia Inquirer, but. What happened was she took all the deputy money and gave it to her staff as bonuses. Oops. And like doubled salaries, tripled salaries, tried to triple her own salary or double her own salary. But it turns out that that had happened before in Philadelphia and there was a distinct law against it. Oops. So now she's saying, ah, oh, we're all out of money, but she, and one of the lawmakers was like, yes, we will get you that money. You're the best law enforcement officer ever, and we all love you. Turned out he was one of the people that got the raise because he used to work for her. Uh, oh. That's hmm. how that works. What, uh, what consequence is she facing? A bad article? Nothing. <sighs> yeah, I don't think there's anybody looking into like a criminal investigation or whatever. Krista, I, you know, this is probably going to shock you, but there might be some corruption in Philadelphia. <laughs> Yeah, just, just, just Philadelphia too. Not everywhere. Just <laughs> well, Philly. They're, I'd say they're toward the top. But they got nothing on Hong Kong. Uh, at least new Hong Kong. Now, some of the traditions of Hong Kong have carried over into the new Chinese rule, but it's a little different these days. Hong Kong police arrest two men accused of soaking officers during Song Cran water celebration. It was, uh, whether intentionally or unintentionally, they've been detained. Everybody's wearing raincoats. That's weird. It's almost like they expected there to be water everywhere. Yeah, that's there's literally a kid pointing a water gun in that picture. Kind of the theme. So the cops said that these are quote unquote dark anti-communist forces. These are people who <laughs> are letting out their hatred of authority and the you know the Chinese rulers through their water guns. Even though this is a festival about spraying each other with water. What a terrible waste of water. Desperate mall cop syndrome. Oh, they don't use clean water. They use bat water. <laughs> <laughs> it's gutter oil. It's hot. This year, to be environmentally friendly, only urine. <laughs> <laughs> only cow urine. <laughs> and uh, if you send your kid to school, you shouldn't expect much in the way of education because modern education is a disaster. But I think you can minimally expect them not to be put into gladiator games. <laughs> 
No yelling and no phones. Florida teacher accused of organizing a middle school fight club. It's like there can be no evidence of this if we're going to do this. You can never talk about it. <laughs> Apparently someone talked about it because we're talking about Somebody it. Somebody broke the phone rule. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there and some videos emerged and yeah. It's a problem. Do they not just have like a wrestling team? Like, And it was all girls. Mm. Yeah. She also... Is there not a, a female wrestling team? <laughs> she also dictated no hair pulling. As a later uh, rule, because apparently there was too much of that going on. It's like, don't go for the face. Okay. I don't know. I think that was fine. Mm. Face attacks were okay. How do you explain that to your parents when you get home? I don't know if there's a lot of parenting going on in some of those cases. Mm-hmm. And cow urine. Uh, we have heard from many high-ranking Indian officials about the many things that cow urine and feces are useful for. They were surprising in all cases for our Western minds because we've been taught that that's a waste product. Just compost, right? Like they just use it for compost. No, they were consuming it. Mm. And some people did some research. Cow urine not fit for human consumption, says Top Animal Research Institute. How much money did that cost? Like, I How much sent, time did I that I could have sent that email. It's like, hey. <laughs> this, could have, this whole study could have been an email. You know, one of the crazy things that came out of this study, though, is they also studied bison urine. And instead of just being like, don't drink animal urine, they were like, well, bison would be way better. <laughs> if you had to. Fewer, uh, what do they call the, um, I don't know tongue if it tongue. Was organisms or whatever was in there, but there's some like 14 bad things in there. And it was less than the bison. Yeah. What if I take the cow urine and do some sort of solar powered, uh, reverse osmosis thing would that would that then make it okay and they're I think like eh. starting with river water would still be yeah a yeah more efficient way to do that i mean i guess if you're not around a body of water and all you got but when, what's the cow drinking just go to what the cow's drinking <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's got to be a better way there's also got to be a way, better way to do environmental cleanup than to collect all the bad stuff and move it to a different spot what were they going to do with this? <laughs> Truck carrying toxic soil from East Palestine overturns in Columbiana County. They're uh, dumping it somewhere in Texas. Doesn't, I mean, does Texas want? <laughs> They're probably getting soil? paid. We found this old coal mine. <laughs> we're going to put it below the water table. What there's could possibly a, go wrong? WKBN 27 doesn't have any of the pictures, but there's a great picture of a guy just standing in the dirt with his hands Needy, on his yeah. hips like, well... We got a problem here. <laughs> There's your problem right there. You overturned all the toxic dirt. <laughs> they only lost half the load of toxic dirt. Thank you very much. And uh, I read this headline and I thought, no, oh, these are people just overreacting. That's got to be something else. But I'm, I'm looking at it. And I can't figure out what that's supposed to be. Yeah. I, I understand what they're going for. It does look. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm interested to hear that. Hollister residents call for removal of rock sculpture that resembles phallic symbol. And if you scroll down, it's just some rocks. So there's a style of fountain where it's like, oh, they call it like a rock bubbler fountain where you drill a hole through a bunch of rocks and then there's water coming out of the top. That just makes it more (laughs) like I assume that that's what they were going for. But then when they they didn't know how to stack the rocks, so it ended up looking like this. I doubt it was intentional. I don't see any infrastructure under that that would hold water. Look, it's usually underneath. It's the, like a pondless system. This has been here for 30 years. The, this idiocy is new. The rock no, sculpture can stay. But if it's been there for 30 years, then there's been serious weathering. Was it maybe something else 30 years ago? Yeah, maybe. And it, if there was a fountain or something inside of it, too. There's uh, the video of the woman. If you watch the, the video on this link, that's like the definition of a Karen. <laughs> what a thing to be upset about. Yeah. It's, it's just funny. Like, who cares? And uh, have uh, you guys watched Mario movie at all? No. Yeah. It might be something like if I had one of my younger cousins, if they were like, we really want to go see that, I'd probably take them, but I'm not going of my own accord. I don't have any control over what shows up on the magic hard drive, but if this were to show up on it six months from now, I'm, I might take a look at it. Mm-hmm. But uh, apparently we are in the minority because it's big numbers. Super Mario Brothers passes Frozen 2 for highest animated global box office, opening with $377 million. I imagine it's a lot of family with kids. So it's probably not awful either. That's the number one animated movie opening ever and the number one video game movie opening ever. I can believe that. I can't believe this surpassed the... Uh... The live action Mario Brothers movie from 20, 30 years ago. When, oh, sorry. Which Mario character will get the first spinoff? 
Peach. Peach? I yeah. think so, yeah. Yeah. Got to be girl power these days, right? Um, I was going to say, has anyone seen the D&D movie? Is that out? Yep. I heard it was actually not bad, but I haven't watched it. Hmm. I haven't heard anything about it, though. No. It seems like the people who are actually really into D&D said it was actually much better than anticipated. Did that open the same weekend as Mario? I think roughly, yeah. Hmm. Bad move. Uh, bad move. But not as bad as this bad move. Magnus Carlsen loses his last competition as a world champion after dramatic slip of his mouse. Oh. You think there would be a system where it's like a confirmation, right? When the stakes were that high? Mm. Are you sure you want to move to that? So he moved his queen into a place where it was vulnerable and just immediately lost. Ooh. There's a screenshot of his reaction. <laughs> <laughs> no! Okay. It's like someone hitting Q and spawn. Oops. I just used my ultimate. It's exactly like that. And uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, everybody's favorite action star slash governor. He is out of the limelight at this point, but he still finds through social media ways to entertain us. Arnold Schwarzenegger posts a video filling in a quote unquote giant pothole in LA, but the city says, well, that was actually a service trench. We're going to have to dig that out. I haven't up. seen a photo of it. Is it actually a trench or is that just the government well, trying to make it look better? You see the black part there? It's pretty big. Yeah. Uh, Somebody's going to have to go and dig that out. Uh, if we put some rebar handles in it, then it would have been easy to just lift out. He didn't even, he used the cold water-based stuff. Mm. Like it wasn't even the real stuff. Probably just made more work for someone. A lot more. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Fox News, as we all know, is owned by Rupert Murdoch. But traditionally, they've always pretended like Rupert was just the money man, right? Like, they didn't have any say in what went on. He definitely didn't influence things. But then, as is always the case, a lawsuit came about. And they had to tell the truth. Fox News under fire for quote-unquote credibility problem over late disclosure of Murdoch role. Okay, I mean, this is obvious to yeah. anybody, but... This is important because of the lawsuit. The lawyers had implied the same as well, and a judge is not having it. The credibility problem is not about the network. I mean, we always knew that that was, like all news networks, not something you can trust. But this is the credibility of them in court, yeah. which does not bode well for their ruling. <laughs> are, are you a shareholder in this company? I've got some bad news. <laughs> but here's some good news if you're a very gullible young person. Because only the most gullible of you will ever go for this, which means it'll probably be sold out, right? Fire Festival 2 is finally happening, says convicted fraudster Billy McFarland. That was the one that was just out on an island. The first one. And like, and it was to be like a big luxury resort. And it was like, here's some peanut butter sandwiches and no, some tents. There, there was no peanut butter. This is oh. what they ate. <laughs> they were also locked indoors with poor bathroom facilities. Uh, that's were, a staple of festivals. There were multiple lawsuits, criminal proceedings, and this fella did some time. And now he's back. He's out and he owes an insane amount of money from all those settlements. So he says, no, the only way I can pay off all these millions of dollars that I owe is to do Fire Festival too. Who would sign up for that? I'm telling you, there'll be a lot of people. What if it's like great and everyone who goes was really looking for a bad time? And then they're disappointed because that's what they actually got a good time. Oh my God. I got a five-star meal. This is terrible. <laughs> it's all uh, journalists. They were all hoping to get that juicy story. Well, this story might give us some idea of why young people would flock to a situation like that. Although you're going to have to go on a plane, which makes this difficult. But maybe they thought about picking this up on location because the reason most people go to festivals isn't for the music. Festival goers planning to use more drugs to save costs on food and drinks. That's the headline. So it's like weird. like Disney World at a festival, you know, it's worse than airport prices, right? It's like, yeah. oh, you want a hamburger? That's $20. Because what are you going to do? So these kids are saying, what I'm going to do is just starve all day and I'm not going to care because I'll be on ecstasy. That is a dark reality. Coming soon to normal life near you. Maybe that could be like a weight loss getaway type of thing. Right? We'll keep you so high. That you won't realize that you'll be. And then you go back to normal life and it's miserable. Yeah, well, that's kind of what the festival's all about anyway, right? I guess. Scratch together a little money and then go and blow it. Do stupid things and then go back to your horrible life. 
But this man won't ever have to do that because he's insanely rich even after doing some really stupid things. One of those things was to start a school and he gave the school his own personal flavor. Ye only fed students sushi at Donda Academy and had no classes on second floor because he was afraid of stairs, the suit says. That is just the tip of the iceberg of the insanity that went on in this school. I, I can't he- imagine they taught them anything. I heard that the sushi thing was even worse than you might imagine because they weren't allowed to bring in outside food. Right, just sushi. Yeah. They also Until you die there because yeah. you've got your fish allergy. <laughs> You'd just be eating the rice. Uh. Yeah. They were not allowed to wear any brand of clothing other than ones he was affiliated with. So like Nike, you could not wear Nike gear. Students or staff. Could you wear like Faded Glory? No, it's just whichever ones he was associated with. Which doesn't were all have a really expensive ones. Yeah. Uh, the movie Bodyguard, I've actually never seen it. Uh-uh. I remember the song, though. Were you old enough to, for that phenomenon? Mm-mm. Oh, my God. That was like the world was captivated by Whitney Houston's magic in a big way. That was a big cultural thing. Now we're getting the musical to recreate it. But it seems the nostalgia is just too overwhelming for the, the theater goers. Bodyguard musical shut down because fans wouldn't stop singing or wouldn't stop singing along to I Will Always Love You. I'm surprised that's not more of a problem for every Broadway production. Because, like, theater kids are a different type of intense. And well, I think they know the, all the words to those songs. But I think the hardcore theater kids were the opposing ones here. Yeah, probably. They wanted the sanctity of the, the show. I want to hear my favorite performer perform. So they escorted some people out, but then more people picked it up the next when they restarted the show and it happened again and again. And finally, there was a mini riot and they just shut the whole thing down. They're not going to do it anymore. That's the most dramatic thing I've ever heard. It's also ballsy because, I mean, I don't know about the whoever this girl is doing the show, but Whitney's performance there, most people are not going to hit that note. Yeah, that's difficult. I mean, you got to really have faith in your own ability to belt that out. In a I mean, I'm sure there's lots of, you know, trained artists who could hit it, but it's just. But it's hard not, to follow. But if you have that level of training, are you doing it in a theater like that? You probably have more respect for it, right? Uh, maybe. Well, you know, it would be great if Mariah Carey was the one there doing it. I've heard she can't hit her notes anymore. Like there was a, a leak of a, a feed of her mic doing All I Want for Christmas is You a couple years ago, and it was yeah. not great. Throwing down the gauntlet. Listen, I love that song. but Which is better? What? I Will Always Love You or? I love All I Want for Christmas is You. Everyone else hates it because of retail, but I always like that song. You're wrong. You're wrong about that. Well, uh, olive oil is a low poofa oil, Mm -hmm. so I eat a lot of it. Never had this problem, but I also don't eat it raw. I usually put it in things and prepare it first. Starbucks customers are complaining about stomach issues from a new olive oil-infused coffee. When do you go to Starbucks? Have you had one of these? No. Oleato? I thought, like, uh, it's like Olestra. I was just going to say Olestra. Do you remember Olestra? Yeah. Mm-mm. yeah. So you might be a little too young for that. Lay's came out with this special oil that your body couldn't process. Oh, so was it? So it was like a fat. You could eat all you want of it. And your body was just like, I don't, I will not turn this into fat. But that meant that. It just went through you. Just yeah. right through you. Yeah. You could eat a bag of those things. And it was almost immediate. The The reviews are saying the same thing. Like right. people are talking about it on Twitter and they're like, I, but, this is a laxative. But you also add coffee's yeah. properties to that. And yeah, apparently. It's like super coffee. So the Starbucks bathroom might not be where you want to go these days. Oh, yeah. I bet. I think they said too in the, that Starbucks knew that this was causing an issue with some people, but they released it anyway. <laughs> Maybe it's like a social media press thing, but. I mean, couldn't you just go get some olive oil, keep it with you, and put it in your... Put it in yourself. Get a packet. (laughs) Probably costs like $3 more, right? Uh, Here's a terrifying... uh, Let's move to the crime section. Here's a terrifying reality that we're living in. Multiple people shot following funeral for homicide victim in Northeast D.C. Some people knew the victim, and they didn't like each other, and then they were shot. Things spiraled. This fella, it was his funeral, and that's his gang-related stuff. He had probably been killed by a rival gang, and then they decided during the funeral that would be a great time to strike. And they did. And it worked.
And uh, also, high-speed chases, boy, they are so much fun to watch. And you can watch a ton of them on YouTube. And they're almost always the same two kinds of cars. <laughs> chargers and Challengers. Guess which one it was in this one? <laughs> Man disguises himself as Walmart employee in an attempt to flee from the police. That headline does not capture it at all. Dude was in a stolen car. They tried to pull him over. He ran away. They got the helicopter. The helicopter chased him. He realized the helicopter was chasing him. Flew, fled to a Walmart. As you do. And then went into the Walmart and disguised himself as a Walmart employee while the police systematically searched the store, was almost apprehended in the rear of the store, ran to the front of the store where he was finally picked up. You flee to Walmart, as is the chosen place for all criminals. <laughs> well... I mean, you can almost guarantee there's going to be some more criminals in there. Right? Yeah. And this young lady, I cannot understand. I, I'm, I'm guessing she just wanted to go back, right? Yeah. She wasn't getting a good quality of life, and she wanted to go back into the institution. Woman 78 accused of third bank heist. I didn't mean to scare you. Yeah, this is this is exactly one of those old people that are struggling a bit, and it's like, oh, I'll go rob the bank. And it's just, mm, eh. institution, not jail, is maybe the more appropriate thing course of action here but uh yeah well she they said she was practically dripping with alcohol when they caught her mm -hmm. so maybe they'll send her somewhere to dry out first 78 man that's crazy 78 in prison yeah that would be brutal here was the most depressing story of the week and I, I just i mean it's obviously bad but think about even in the best of times this many cows in one building how awful of a place must that be 18,000 cows killed in an explosion fire at Texas Dairy Farm. Might be the largest cattle killing ever. Yeah. And Number two was 400. Yeah. Well, they can't even dispose of the bodies correctly, right? Because I was that's reading a, some, That's just apocalyptic, right? Yeah. You have to make a pile somewhere and then they have to be heated to, uh, to 168 degrees because of things. So Pathogens. To, and like you can't, like it's just, yeah, it's just, it's horrifying at all levels. Apparently it was a... Uh, some kind of explosion piece of equipment caught something. They might've been using one of those bleeders where they get the methane out and try to keep it. But the building was metal and there was just no escaping. So terrible. Maybe we should keep cows in buildings that are less than like 10,000. <laughs> Whoa. Controversial. Could that be a rule? Remember the VR headsets is like, have we, if we give the cows VR headsets, we can stack them one on top of another. No, it's like, but maybe we should just let the cows roam a little bit. They'll be healthier. No, yeah. the VR roaming. It's all they need. Ugh. The cows are on the VR. It's like, wow, this grassy knoll looks really nice, but it's getting warm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor cow. Uh -huh. Also, poor bees. And the bees, uh, you know, our poor bees. We're trying to figure out how to save them. All these people that want to replace them with robots. I just can't imagine that's going to work. No, not at scale. We need the bees. We Start need other pollinators too, not just bees. Starting to have a problem with carpenter bees at my house. It's like, mm, that's probably not good. Well, they're not honeybees, so do whatever you want to them. <laughs> Screw those bees. Shaking up bees forego life's pleasures. They're just trying to survive. Yeah, I can relate. <laughs> I, f I feel that little bee. So they wanted to figure out if bees could be made depressed, which is a dark study. So what they did is they fed them they sprayed like a gas, and then after they sprayed the gas, they would either give them sugar water or something disgusting or punish them in some way. And they learned that, yeah, the bees quickly figured out wasn't the smell of gas and they would extend their little proboscis. Do bees have proboscis? No. Oh, They're the, bee tongues. Yeah. And then they decided to change up the study. They gave them mixtures of gases. So the bees were like, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. And one group... They shook vigorously for 60 seconds. The other group, Aww. they didn't. That's sad. Amazingly, the group that was shaken, distrustful. <laughs> Wonder why. <laughs> Wonder how much money we spent on this study. We're, hey, we literally need to get more bees, and it's like, let's just torture the bees a little. <laughs> let's, let's really punish them. Let's find their limits. Yeah. And New York is having a bit of a rat problem. So they have like an ongoing rat created problem. a new public servant. New York City appoints its first rat czar to tackle rodent problem. But wasn't she already the squirrel czar? Was that the was that she, the takeaway? She did something else. Is that, is that your title like on your paycheck? Yeah. And she makes a pretty good living. I think it was like 150000 a year. 155000 Is that great in New York? Well, it's probably just barely surviving in New York. But uh, 
they didn't have a lot of specific things that they're going to do about job the duties. Yeah. Get these rats under control. I should not see a rat hauling away an entire large pizza as I board the subway. <laughs> and uh, here's a good boy that you could actually probably get, although I think there are probably going to be a lot of people looking for this guy because of his great story. Alcoholic dog who got addicted to drinks left out by owner is now sober. Oops. Our video has already rotated. Oh, here we go. There's a picture. Coco. That's a good dog. They took Coco to the clinic or the shelter after I think it might have been a hoarding situation or something. Mm -hmm. And Coco had a, another dog that lived in the house as well. The other dog succumbed to withdrawal symptoms. Mm. They were so alcoholic that the detox killed them. So they immediately were like, oh my God, this is what's happening. They sedated Coco for four weeks and managed to pull through and uh, off the sauce at this point. What's crazy about that too is like, I mean, alcohol is poison for everybody, but I think for dogs in particular, it's really, really bad. Like gotta, that's one of the, the banned food lists at the vet's office. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Uh, I got to wonder if Coco, like, is there ever a time that Coco's on the farm and like, enjoy, you know, the breeze in, the, in their face and they're enjoying themselves like, God, this life is so much better. And they're just thinking, God, oh, I need a drink. I need a beer, right? <laughs> or they're, they're on that farm life and then, you know, some kid in a truck drives by and they throw their beer out the window. Or some apples fall off the tree and start fermenting mm. on the ground. <laughs> yeah, the and there's apple seeds in there. That's like a double whammy for oh a dog. The Coco's fermenting dead. ground fruit is the real problem. Got to keep cocoa indoors, maybe. Because we there was uh, drunk bears. Some of the people in my family used to have some really amazing stories. They were like, oh, yeah, when I was a kid, there was a bear that got into the apples under old man whoever's tree. And that thing was drunk and passed out in the yard. I'm pretty like, sure that's why the deer gravitate to our yard is because we have a bunch of old apple trees that drop the fruit and then it goes bad. You should put out some, uh, like, bird feeders, but for the deer with liquor in them. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you guys like this? You're going to love. You want? You think fermented apples are great. Have some early times. Mm. <laughs> And uh, this is horrific. This definitely looks like the zombie apocalypse. I could see this crossing over and ending us all. A terrifying fungal disease is infecting frogs in Africa. Here's why it matters. Well, it's the ecological destruction because frogs are important to the whole ecosystem. Look at it. They yeah, just, it's not great. Their skin comes off. That ain't what you want if you're mm. a frog. Anyway, as things get warmer, it's easier for fungus to survive inside of us. Look, I'm getting swabbed. He seems all right with it. So fungal infections may become more prevalent over time, not just in frogs, but potentially in us too. That's no fun. Guy. Uh, uh. That's why they subscribe. And uh, I think from here on out, it's just happy animal stories. Uh, Germany, an, an uncooperative quote unquote squirrel freed from a manhole cover. And yes, it was a red squirrel, not a gray squirrel. So there's at least that. Do we have to bring race into it? <laughs> I want to hear the Germans pronounce squirrel. A, they probably have a different word for it, right? They do. It's hard for Americans to pronounce it. I can't remember what it is right now, but listening to a German try to say the English word for squirrel is also very comical. Pro probably the German equivalent of like uh, hairy tail man hands. I think it starts with an E, but it's been a while. But I remember being it being very difficult to say, but then Germans struggle to say squirrel, so it kind of evens out. So in the past... I think a year ago, another squirrel had been trapped in the same manhole, and they're not sure if this is the exact same squirrel. <laughs> they need to radio tag him so they can find out. Maybe he wants to be in there. Maybe that's why he was so uncooperative. Yeah. It's like, I belong here. It's my hole. It's made for me. And we had uh, Easter. I didn't do any egg hunting, Chris. So you said you did. Yeah, well, I did the egg hiding. Now, here's a, here's a question that we talked about on the podcast. Uh, and Tell us in the comments. In your family, do you color the eggs and then hide those same eggs? Or do you only do plastic eggs like a loser? My family does plastic eggs with candy in it, and then they just get put outside. Well, the, only, the individual families will color eggs with kids too. But Not only does that betray the memory of Jesus, <laughs> but it attracts bears. Black bear crashes Easter egg hunt and eats all the candy. Look how happy he is. This was, I was excited because I thought this was local, but apparently it was in Connecticut. I thought that... uh. Like, 
chocolate is bad for bears in the way that it's bad for dogs. It probably is. And it's, also a fed bear is a dead bear. But it's probably, they would have to eat a lot of chocolate, right? Yeah. I mean, those for their body eggs. weight. Here's a, here's a question. If you're a bear rating Easter, what would you think would be your favorite candy that you'd find? I like the insides of the eggs, but the, the shell's too crunchy. It's not very uh, good. No, there's no flavor. <laughs> I would think something like blackberry, if there's like a blackberry candy, but maybe Skittles, something like Mostly chocolate, right? Mm. Easter candy is mostly chocolate. We had some taffy in ours this year. Oh, I bet a bear would be crazy. But, well, they'd probably have trouble with taffy. Though. Yeah, because it's so chewy. Now I just want to see a bear trying different. Different Easter egg, candies. yeah. <laughs> New shell. And the, this is my favorite one because this moose, you know, I mean, in Alaska, they're right there with you. And he was strolling by a hospital. He doesn't know it's a hospital, but he sees and he's like, oh, it's wintertime and there's green things in there. Moose feasts on lobby plants in Alaska hospital building. And the scariest thing about this is this is a baby moose. Where's the mama moose? <laughs> Not eating plants inside the hospital. They made the announcement, even though moose are pretty common in Alaska, they made the announcement. They were like, hey, everybody, there's a moose in the lobby. So if you just want to avoid that. And immediately everybody came to the lobby to get a video of the moose eating the plants. As you do. I think uh, grown was probably not this one, but like grown moose around autumn, that's like their rutting season. And they tend to be super aggressive then. I would not want to deal with the moose in any season. Yeah, true. They're very large animals. Even a small one. But I would love to watch one eat hospital plants. Do you think they even actually had real plants at that hospital? Uh, apparently they did. Maybe they shouldn't from now on. Maybe it was plastic ones and it was just eating. It's just filling up on microplastics. He's so bound up right now. Like, <laughs> ah, those hospital plants don't agree with me. Those hostas. Was that the last one? Wow, that was an hour. It's a long episode chat. A lot of nonsense. We, we, need, to, we need to shut up. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs>